ensuring that the powers and functions of both the rulers and the ruled are in accordance with the law of the land is that the perfect answer should be constitutionalism. Now, in the absence of constitutionalism, we pick rule of law. And in the absence of rule of law, the next correct answer is constitutional supremacy. So the correct answer here is D, constitutional supremacy. Now to the next question. The unrestrained capacity to effect compliance is dash. Now, there are two technical answers here. We have power, we have authority. But the answer is power. Why is it power and why is it not authority? At this being, the question was like this. The unrestrained capacity of a state to effect compliance, the answer would have been sovereignty. But the question is saying the unrestrained capacity to effect compliance. It could be a person, it could be a state, it could be a group of persons. So when a state or a country is not mentioned, the answer will be power. The ability to generate obedience. If the question is just that, that's power. The ability of a state to generate obedience, the answer will be what? Sovereignty. So in this context, the correct answer is power. See, now to the next question. The unrestrained capacity to effect compliance is dash. So the answer is still power in this context. Even though we don't have sovereignty again, but the answer is still power. The explanations for the 32nd question aptly suffices for this 33rd question. When a state is not mentioned, when a country is not mentioned, if it is just about the ability to compel obedience, the capacity to generate compliance, if it is not about a state, at this point it was about a state, it would be sovereignty, but since state is not mentioned, it is just what? Power. So the correct answer is still C. Now to the next question. Legitimacy entails dash. According to a German sociologist, Max Weber, who wrote on authority and legitimacy, he described legitimacy as the acceptance and acceptability of the rulers by the citizens, of their right to govern them. So legitimacy has to, is, it is from the Latin word legitimare or legitimus, which means according to the law or generated by virtue of the law. So when we have a government in place that comes into power in a way that is according to the law, we would say such government is what? Legitimate. So what does legitimacy now entail? That support that, sit, that leaders enjoy from citizens. The recognition that leaders enjoy from citizens. The acceptability, the social goodwill and capital that those in government enjoy from the citizens. Can it increase or decrease? Yes. So now let us pick the correct answer. Ability to govern a right. That's not legitimacy. Recognize power to govern, devoid of lawfulness. It looks as if it is the answer, but it is completely wrong because devoid of lawfulness. So, recognize is legitimacy recognize power? Yes. But is it devoid of? Devoid means not according to law. Legitimacy is according to law. It is where we get the word legit, according to law. Support enjoyed by leaders from rulers. It should have been the answer if it is support enjoyed by leaders from citizens. So leaders are also rulers. So leaders don't enjoy their support from themselves. They enjoy it from the citizens. So the correct answer here is D, the social, political goodwill and capital invested on governments with mandates by the citizens. So the correct answer is D. Now to the next question. The father of Athenian democracy was Dash. The correct answer was Cleisthenes. He was the father of Athenian democracy. Mind you, if a question comes out that who was the first person to write on the concept of democracy, that was Alexis de Tocqueville, a French philosopher. Now to the next question. German sociologist Max Weber wrote on Dash. Like I said earlier, he wrote on authority and legitimacy. So did he write on power? No. Did he write on checks and balances? No. Did he write on political sovereignty? No. So having eliminated the three, the, 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 the option to be chosen is none of the above. Now to the next question. Human rights are best known as Dash. Now this question says are best known as Dash. So they might be known as privileges. They can also be known as liberties. 
But the question is saying, they can best be known as what? They can best be known as liberties. So human rights are also liberties that citizens are entitled to. And these rights are enshrined and, and captured and encapsulated and encoded in the Constitution, which is the fundamental law which stipulates how a country is to be governed. So the perfect answer here is liberties. But in the absence of liberties, we can pick freedoms. In the absence of freedoms, we can pick privileges. So the correct answer here is D. Now to the next question. Government exists chiefly to dash. When we say chiefly, it means principally, majorly, fundamentally, essentially. So government exists essentially to dash. So it means there are many things that government exists to do. But which one is the principal one? Which comes first? Which one is primus inter pares, first among equal? A, maintain law and deviance. It could, it could have been hey if it was maintained law and order. But deviance has to do with disobedience to law. Government does not exist to maintain disobedience to law. So it is not A. B, provide social amenities. Can we say government exists to provide social amenities? Yes. Mind you, social amenities are also called public utilities, essential services, and so on and so forth. Government exists to provide that, but is that the major reason for the existence of government? No. C, protect lives and properties. Government does exist to ensure that. But the major reason why government exists in a state is to maintain law and order. But in the absence of maintain law and order, D suffices for maintain law and order because it says ensure social political tranquility and orderliness. In that D, we still have maintain law and order. So the correct answer here is D. Now to the next question. A Greek philosopher, Aristotle, opined the purpose of a state to be dash. He opined the purpose of a state to be to promote good life and happiness. So the correct answer here is C, promote good life and happiness. Now to the next question. Under a representative system, sovereignty does not reside with dash. Now, a representative system is a system in which citizens elect their leaders. So it means sovereignty. We reside with the voters. So that question is just a technical way of asking you that where does political sovereignty reside or where does popular sovereignty reside or under democracy where does sovereignty reside mind you representative system is associated with indirect democracy it can also be known as republicanism or republican system of government so where does sovereignty reside with voters with electors with with with, with electorate so it resides with electors but it does not reside with elected or legitimate government the type of sovereignty that resides with elected or legitimate government is legal sovereignty. So under a representative system, sovereignty does not reside with, the answer will be E, which stands for B and C. It doesn't reside for B and C. So before we take the course, the first question, I would like to remind you subscribers to do well to follow us on our YouTube page at Rock Us and hit the notification bell too. Thank you. Now to the 41st question. Federal elections were held in Nigeria in Dash. Now, federal elections were held in 1954. Federal elections were held in 1959, in 1964, in 1979, in 1983, in 1993, and from 1999 till date. Every four, four years from 1999 till date. So the correct answer is the one that has 1954, B, 1959, 1964, 1979 and 1983 there was no federal election in 1960 there was no federal election in 1963 there was no federal election in 1946 so the correct answer is b 54 59 64 79 and 83 now to the next question nigeria broke and severe diplomatic relations with israel in 1973 because of israel's dash now, Israel forcefully occupied a part of Egypt called Sinai and the Golan Heights in 1973. Are you getting me now? Shortly after the Yom Kippur War. And because of that, Nigeria broke and severed diplomatic relations with Israel. 
a, 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 a situation which was to last for about about 20 years. It was restored in 1992 September under General Ibrahim Badamosi Babangida. So what's the correct answer? Because Israel forcefully occupied an Egyptian territory called Sinai and the Golan Heights. That was why Nigeria broke diplomatic relations with Israel. Now to the next question. Citizens who are legally qualified to vote form the dash. So masses does not consist of people who are legally qualified to vote. So the correct answer is electors. It is not word. Word refers to the smallest units, the smallest wing of a political party. It is not political party members. It is electors. If you don't see electors, you can pick electorate. If you don't see electorate, you can also pick what? Voters. They enjoy franchise. So the correct answer is D. Now to the next question. Under the 1979 Constitution, members of the Federal Executive Council were called Dash. Now under the 1979 Constitution, members of the Federal Executive Council were called Ministers. So the correct answer is A. Now to the 45th question. Prior to the 1979 Constitution, equivalent members of the Federal Executive Council were called Dash. Now before 1979 Constitution, which ushered in the Second Republic. Members of the Federal Executive Council were called Federal Commissioners. So you see Federal Commissioner for Health, Federal Commissioner for Finance, and so on and so forth. But by virtue of the 79th Constitution, members of the Federal Executive Council were now referred to as ministers, which we still adopt till date. So the correct answer here is B, Federal Commissioners. Now to the next question. It was not until Dash that the region covering the Sahel vegetation became self-governing. Now, you have to know that the Sahel and Sudan vegetation covers the northern part of Nigeria. Are you getting now? So that question is technically asking you that, when did the northern part of Nigeria become internally self-governing? Mind you, the western and eastern part of Nigeria became self-governing in 1957. Mind you, Anthony Enauro, a member of the House of Rep and also a member of the Action Group had initially moved the motion for self-independence in 1953. East and West became self-governing in 57, while Northern Nigeria became self-governing in 1959, and the entire country became self-governing in 1960. So the correct answer here is 1959. Now to the next question. Nigeria's first unelected executive president was Dash. This question is quite tricky. Why is it tricky? It is only under a presidential system that we can have an, an executive president. And an executive president is elected by the whole country. The whole country is the constituency for electing an executive president. So how come someone can become an executive president without being elected? You know, in the year 2007, Umaru Musaya Radua, was the presidential candidate of People's Democratic Party, and Goodluck Ebele Azikiwe Jonathan was the vice presidential candidate of PDP. The PDP candidate and flag bearer defeated the candidate of the AMPP, um, Muhammadu Buhari, and uh, Umaru Musaya Adwa was sworn in as a president. But in the year 2010, Umaru Musaya Adwa died. And because of that, the Senate had to invoke the doctrine of necessity to swear in Good Luck Jonathan as the, as the executive president of Nigeria. Was, this, was he elected in that year, 2010? No. He became executive president in an unelected manner. But mind you, a year after, there was a general election, so he could now contest for the first time as a flag bearer, and he became an executive president in an elected manner. So Nigeria's first unelected executive president was Dash Goodluck Jonathan. M to the next question, number 48. Nigeria's vice president in the Second Republic. Second Republic was between 1979 to 1983. The president was Alagi Sheu Shagari, and the vice president was Dr. Alex Ekweme. So the correct answer here is D, Alex Ekweme. Now to the next question. In the Second Republic, each state produced dash senators each. In the Second Republic, each state produced five senators each. 
So, but in this fourth republic, this fourth dispensation, which began in 1999, according to the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, each state is entitled to producing three senators each. So we have 36 states multiplied by three senators each. That gives you 108 plus one senator from Abuja making 109. So there are 109 senatorial seats in Nigeria. And there are 360 House of Rep seats. So in the entire, we have 109 senatorial seats, 360 House of Rep. So in the entire National Assembly, we have 469 seats. Now to the next question. The founder and editor of the West African Pilot was Dr. Unam De Azikiwe, which was founded in 1937. So the correct answer is Dr. Unam De Azikiwe. Now to the next question. NNDP's first president was Dash. Now, NNDP was Nigeria's first political party. Mind you, by virtue of the Saeed Clifford Constitution of 1922, there was the introduction of elective principles in Nigeria. Elective principles means what? It means that political parties can now be formed and elections can now hold. That came into effect in 1922. And because of that, in a year after, in 1923, the first political party, NNDP, was formed by Abbott Macaulay. So NNDP's first president was Abbott Macaulay. Now to the next question. The Oboni Society was headed by the Dash under pre-colonial Yoruba Kingdom. The Oluo was the head of the Oboni Society under Oyo Empire. See, now to the next question. What heads under the old Oyo Empire were known as the Dash? What heads were known as the Bale? Why streets council or street heads were known as the Mogaji? That's where you hear Mogaji Adugbo. So street heads were known as Mogaji. While word heads were known as Bahale. Now to the next question. In regard to the Latin lexicon, primus inter pares, which means first among equals, which of the following options is disparate and null and void? Disparate means it cannot align with others and it cannot stand with others. So when we, when we speak of primus inter pares, first among equals, or prime minister, the German Chancellor is, is the German Chancellor a Prime Minister? Yes. The opera in Igbo pre-colonial system. Is he, is he functioning as a Prime Minister? Yes. He was the eldest amongst the Council of Chiefs. The India Cabinet Head, who also happens to be the Indian Prime Minister, Narendra Modi. Are you getting me now? Is a Prime Minister. Is he the first among equal? Yes, is a is a primus inter Paris. The Brit is Britain's head of state a, a prime minister? No, Britain's head of state is the monarch. We have a separate person known as prime minister, who is Rishi Sunak, Brazilian prime minister. Brazil cannot have a prime minister because Brazil practices presidential system. Only countries that practice cabinet or parliamentary system can have a prime minister. So. Two options are disparate. They are null and void. They are ultra virus, and they cannot go with the other options. That is VI and VII, and that is option B. Now to the next question. Red tapism, complex office routines, administrative procedures and bottlenecks, over dependence on precedence. Which of the above is or are not associated with bureaucracy? Everything here. Is associated with bureaucracy. So none of the above is not associated with bureaucracy. Those the correct answer is D. Now to the next question. Nigeria's president is customarily sworn in by the Dash. The president of Nigeria is customarily sworn in by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, the CJN. The governor of a state is customarily sworn in by the Chief Judge of that state. So since we don't have the Chief Justice of Nigeria here, the answer will be none of the above. Option E. Now to the next question. No legal limitation to the authority of the parliament. The sole right of lawmaking belongs to the parliament. Only the parliament can legislate on public funds. The power of parliament is perpetually supreme to that of the people. Parliament cannot extend its own life. Which of the following is or are not true of parliamentary supremacy? Now, parliamentary supremacy is a core feature of a parliamentary or cabinet or Westminster system of what? Government. So under a parliamentary system, 
there is no limitation to the no legal limitation to the authority of the parliament it means parliament is what supreme the right to make laws belongs to which authority parliament that's there <clears throat> only the parliament can make laws on public funds that's correct the power of parliament is perpetually supreme to that of the people let us keep that somewhere parliament cannot extend its own life parliament can extend its own life you know, in extreme cases, during cases of war, during cases of emergencies, and so on and so forth. So, the only option here that speaks of a, a, a feature that does not apply to parliamentary system is that the power of parliament is perpetually supreme to that of the people. Do we have parliamentary supremacy under, under parliamentary system? Yes. But during the period of general election, the power of the people comes into play. But after general election, Parliament is what? Supreme again. So which one is the odd one here? That is IV. So the correct answer is B. Now to the next question. Mining. Territorial integrity. Tertiary health. Primary health. Citizenship. And prisons. Which of the above falls under residual legislative list under federalism? We have three lists. The exclusive list, which belongs to the federal government. Anything you can find on the exclusive list can be carried out only by the federal government. Printing of money, only the federal government can do that. Appointing ambassadors to countries, only the federal government can do that. Mining resources, only the federal government can do that, and so on and so forth. We have the concurrent list. Any item you find on the concurrent list can be jointly carried out by both the federal government and the state governments. So that is concurrent things like education. That's why you can find something like Federal University or Yekiti and Ekiti State University. So education can be done by federal and also done by state. And lastly, we have the residual list. Anything you can find on the residual list can be carried out by the state or local government. Is that clear? So which of the above can you find only on that residual legislative list? The only thing you can find on that residual legislative list here is primary health. That is IV. That is D, primary health. Now to the next question. Which of the above does not fall under exclusive legislative list? Now we need to go back to number 58. We need to go back to number 58 to check which of the above does not fall under exclusive legislative list. <clears throat> so, mining falls under exclusive, territorial falls under exclusive, tertiary falls under exclusive, citizenship exclusive, prisons exclusive. So, the only one that does not fall under exclusive is primary health. So, let's go back to number 59. So, IV. Which of the above does not fall under exclusive legislative? Now, the correct answer is D. Three and four, tertiary health and primary health. Now to the next question. A country that has experienced incessant military interregnum is said to have fallen into dash. Interregnum has to do with the fact that the country has the country has experienced frequent military coup d'état. Are you getting me? Now, when a country has fallen into such a condition, it is called a praetorian trap. So the correct answer here is D.